Welcome to Pursue a Night of Worship. If you are joining us online, we're so thankful for technology, amen, that you can be with us, that you can join us. You can watch our friends and our brothers and our sisters get baptized tonight. I'm so excited for everything that God's been doing and everything that he's going to do tonight. Well, just a couple things I want to let you know about um, tonight before we jump into things. Um, like you probably see over here, we have our baptismal set up and some people getting baptized. And I am so pumped, guys. I am so excited, as should you. So, But I'm going to need you to help me out with this. When that person goes down into the water and comes back up, I need to hear you scream, shout, clap, because it's a big deal. It's so exciting. For you joining us online, you can cheer at home, um, because we know that all of heaven is rejoicing with us, because it's awesome. That's going to start after the first song. Um, also, later on in the service, we are going to have a time of prayer. We're going to have prayer teams up here. So if you need prayer, no matter what it is, we want to pray with you. We want to partner with you in prayer. Don't think it's too little or too big for God. He wants to meet you right where you are. And there's been people praying for you and people here tonight that want to pray for you. So I encourage you when that time comes to come forward and get prayer. Also, one more thing that I want you guys to check out tonight is we are getting ready to launch uh, our groups and community nights, and we would love for you to get plugged in to one of our groups. So outside in the lobby today in the cafe, you'll see lots of people out there, lots of tables, and guys, there's chocolate because the fast is over, so we can have some chocolate, amen? Yes. I had a Dr. Pepper today, and I hardly ever do that, but I'm like, fast is over. Let's have some Dr. Pepper. But so go out there, meet some people, check out all the groups, get signed up for something because God is going to move in those groups. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but God always speaks to me in a way that I didn't, don't think that he will during a time of prayer and fasting. And we want to hear what God was doing in your life. So I encourage you over either tonight or over the next few days, you can go onto our app and you can share your story. You can share what God did in your life through the fast right there on the app because we want to celebrate with you. But one thing that God spoke so clearly to me over this fast was that he's a filler, not a forcer. Meaning that he's not going to force his way into my life, but he does want to fill it. And in order for him to fill my life, I need to make space for him. I need to make room for him. And that's what fasting does. We press pause on some things. We spend more time with him. And of course, he comes and fills. But he's not going to force you to do it. So tonight, as we go into this time of worship, as we pursue the presence of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, I want you to make room for what he wants to do in your life because he wants to fill every space. So will you stand with me tonight? I'm going to pray over this time. I'm going to pray that God meets you right where you are, that he performs miracles in your life. But I want to hear you loud tonight. I want to see your hands raised. I want to see you worshiping the Lord and celebrating all that he's doing. Dear God, we're so thankful to be in your house this evening. Whether we're here in this room or we're watching at home or at work or in our car, God, we know that your presence is with us. And we open ourselves to you. We want to give you more room to move in our lives. So help us, God, to let go of those things that are holding us back. Help our focus and our attention to be on you and you alone, Jesus. It's in your mighty name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, church, can we put our hands together tonight? Come on, the Lord is in this place. He's worthy of all our praise and worship. Come on, let's give him our everything tonight. Break 
down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. If you cannot survive when we praise you, the God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift Him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. And let faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea. And let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. And let it rise. Let faith arise. Yes, 
Cause I know how this story is And I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory
I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord.
a bow, amen. Wonderful day to come when every knee bows before your name. But we will not wait until it does. For here and now shall your kingdom reign. Oh, 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 oh. We, we sing hallelujah, hallelujah. No end. The things 
you've done before in greater measure you will do again there's no prison wall you can't break through no mountain you can't move all things are possible there's no broken body you can't raise no soul that you can save all things are possible the darkest night you can light it up you can light it up god of a revival let hope arise presence fill our hearts awaken our souls come awaken your people come come awaken your city oh god of revival pour it out pour it out Every stronghold will crumble, hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Come awaken your people, come awaken the city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will Change in the ground. Oh God of revival, 
revival pouring out, pouring out. Every stronghold will crumble. Hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Come awaken your people. Come awaken the city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. Hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out. for this opportunity. In this night that we've called pursuit, where we come to pursue you, not to dictate to you what we think that you should do or how you should move, but just to receive from you what it is you would have for us. In this moment, in this season, in this year, as we are finishing out January, as we are concluding 21 days of prayer and fasting, where we have positioned ourselves or oriented ourselves to hear from you and to ask you to move and to speak to us. We thank you that we get to celebrate with these individuals as they decided to make their profession of faith public and celebrate not just with those of us in this room, but online as we celebrated new life. We thank you for the new life that you give us in Jesus Christ, but we thank you for the fresh anointing that you have for us coming out of 2020 and into the rest of this year. We thank you for a freshness. We thank you for a newness. We thank you that you are still on the throne and you've never wondered what was going on, and you've never questioned anything, and you've never been surprised because you see the beginning from the end, and you're drawing us to yourself. And we thank you, and we trust you. We pray this in Jesus' name. As I said, the, these nights are called Pursuit. This is the second one we've, we've done, and one of the things that we really want is just to hear from the Lord. And we know that in the book of Corinthians that Paul talks about some gifts that he's given to the church and how it's not only the, the, the pastor or the preacher that will speak, but he may give a gift or a word to someone to share that then we can all take it uh, corporately and judge for ourselves what the Lord would be saying uh, or not saying to us. Or maybe you're joining us online and say, I'm not there. Could I participate in this? Absolutely. And so we just have some individuals in our church who God uses in that way. And one of those individuals, her name is Charlene Perry, and she came and said, I feel like the Lord has something. And so here's what, here's what we do around here is uh, we don't try to hype it up in any way, but I'm just going to ask you to assume a posture of listening. Some people like to bow their heads and close their eyes. Some people just like to stand. But I would just ask you to partner with me as we listen to maybe what God would have to say to us. And maybe if you hear it, you're like, I don't know what that means. Maybe tomorrow you don't know what it means. But maybe in the weeks, days, and maybe a month from now, I'd be, oh, oh, I remember when we were in that pursuit night and God spoke. And so would you just, uh, whatever posture you want to assume as we hear what God would say to us. Awake, awake, my bride, for I must see that your eyes are solely on me, for my eyes are solely on you. I would ask that you would cleanse your heart. Look at those things that may be holding you back, those things that need to be cleansed, that need to be laid at the altar. I want your heart to be totally for me. Make yourself ready for our, and put on the bridal clothes, for our time is near. I love my bride. I love my bride. Make yourselves ready for me. Cleanse your hearts. Cleanse your hearts. Holy Spirit, we thank you for speaking. Lord, as we just take a moment to let that sink in, we thank you that by the finished work of, of Jesus Christ that we have the opportunity to respond to you. That words of encouragement come, that God, we can sense that, yes, there is a, a sense of urgency, that we understand the times that we're in, and that we realize you have done everything for us in the person of Jesus, so we can come to you with the things in our lives that may have 
may be holding us back, the things that you've made us aware of, Father, we, it does take a partnership with you that we actively say, hey, we trust you, Father, we love you, we lay it down because we know that what you have for us is even better. So thank you. Thank you for speaking to us on this pursuit night. And I know that you're going to continue to speak to us as we move through, not just tonight, but through our lives. As a matter of fact, I believe that you're always speaking, and we just ask that you help us to incline our ears and our hearts to see and to hear you in things that maybe we don't often look for you in. We pray this in Jesus' name. Well, at this time, it's going to change just a little bit. We're going to go into some softer or contemplative worship songs. We're also going to have an opportunity for prayer. So those of you that are going to help me pray, you can go and assume uh, a position along the wall. All along the perimeter of, of the uh, auditorium in here, there'll be uh, some people that uh, would love to pray with you at any point in time during any of these next three songs that you would like uh, to receive prayer, whether it may be for sickness, whether it may be for any, a problem that you're just dealing with, whatever the case may be, I would just encourage you to stand with someone. There's something powerful about agreeing with someone in prayer and having them pray for you. So whatever you're comfortable with, if you'd prefer that they they wear a mask, uh, each and every one of them has a mask and would um, be more than happy to do so. But I would just encourage you to stand in agreement. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, that there he is in the midst. And so here's what I'd like for us to do over the course of the next three songs. If you want to stand, stand. If you want to sit, sit. If you want to kneel, you can kneel. But I would just encourage you to sit in God's presence, worship in whatever way that you feel appropriate. But just take the next few moments and just take a deep breath. Just relax. Just be at peace. And maybe God will speak to your heart. Maybe he'll prompt something. Maybe he'll just give you his peace and you just sit and relax. I remember when I was uh, helping serve in youth, there was a young man that would come in and he would come in and he would sleep every service. He would sleep. And it was like loud and crazy. And the honor went, I'm like, we got to wake this kid up. And the youth pastor said, he comes from a very volatile environment and he feels peaceful in here. Let him sleep. Let him sleep. We don't always have to do something during worship. Sometimes we just need to allow God to speak to us, to just realize that his peace is a gift, that he, he, his peace passes and transcends understanding and guards our heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Right? So, you know, whatever your expectation may be, I don't know what that is, but if it's just, God, I want you, I want to pursue you, may we just be open to what it is that he wants to do. So I encourage you, if you want to pray, please, they would... These individuals would love nothing more than to agree with you and pray. If there's a prayer request that you want to fill in, we would be happy to fill it out for you and continue to pray for you. But let me pray before we just move into this next section. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you that you've brought us through the fire. We thank you that you're moving. It's like that Waymaker song, even though we can't see you, you're working. Even though we can't feel you, you're working. I pray as we bring a a conclusion to this 21 days of prayer and fasting that we look forward into February and the rest of the year with expectant hearts to see that, God, you are working and you are moving on our behalf. You're drawing us closer to yourself. And may we respond to the sense of urgency that, God, we have a role to play in this with you as we partner. So minister to us, Father, for the rest of our time here, all of those who are joining us online. And God, we just pray Ephesians 3.20 that you would do exceedingly and abundantly above anything that we could ask for or imagine at the power that is at work within us. And that's the power of Jesus.
just want to be where you are And I just want to be near your heart For there is nothing like your love And Jesus, there is nothing like your love
nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, Jesus, nothing else. from 
my mother's womb You have chosen me Love has called my name and I've been born again Into your family Your blood flows through my veins And from my mother's womb chosen me your love has called my name and I've been born again into your family your blood flows through my veins and I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am child of God and I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am a child of God and I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am a child of God
For I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child of God Just stay in this in this moment just for just for a bit. So we just rest. of as Jesus spoke to his disciples and he said the peace that I give you is not the same peace that the world tries to offer Father we thank you that your peace has nothing to do with our circumstances we thank you that your peace has nothing to do with our possessions or lack thereof we thank you that our peace has nothing to do with anything but you and that your peace is produced within us as as Paul would write in Philippians, that it passes and transcends our ability to understand and it guards our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus. Even though we don't feel it, it is guarding the mind and the heart, which at times gives us issues. It's the, through the heart and our mind that we're trying to navigate this thing that we call life, but may we know that peace is standing guard for our minds and our hearts. And I pray that Father, may you show us the areas by the Holy Spirit where we're letting the guard of peace down, where we're allowing things to infiltrate our mind and our hearts that is causing discord, that is causing disunity, that is causing chaos, that is causing confusion, that is causing fear and worry. 
because peace is standing guard. May we step up underneath the guard of your peace and produce that in us, that which we do not understand, but that which we know is effective and effectual for us. We thank you for an opportunity like this on a snowy, cold night in January to come or to tune in and just pursue you. I pray the pursuit does not end here. This is not a, a, a special moment in that you have to pursue God when just people come together and we can pursue you every day. And it's beautiful when we can do that communally. But may this just be an impetus. May this just be a kind of a spark for us to say, Holy Spirit, I want to pursue you every day. May we make time in our busy schedules to sit and to hear from you, to let peace be strengthened, to let peace stand guard. We thank you. We just thank you for what you've done. And Lord, I step out on a limb and just say thank you for 2020. Thank you. Thank you for what was produced in us that we are not yet aware of. Thank you that, that God, you, you, you brought us through. You did not remove yourself from the situation, but you stood in the fire with us. And you did a work within us that needed to be done. It wasn't comfortable. It wasn't fun. It wasn't tingly. But Father, it was a strong work in us that needed to be done. I thank you that you're a good Father. It's hard to thank you in the midst of things, but we thank you because we trust that you know what you're doing. You've not seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begged from bread. You do not leave us nor forsake us. You are Emmanuel, the God who is with us. You are the potter. We are the clay. We are not the potter. We are the clay. And at times you put us in the refining fire, but we come out stronger and better and more able and more capable to do what you've called us to do. So may we move into the rest of this year with a spirit of gratitude, a spirit of thankfulness, knowing that we're guarded by your peace. And as we sang, we're not a slave to fear. We want to be where you are. And ultimately, we want nothing else but you. But you in our, in our lives and in our relationships and in our jobs, our finances, our, our everything. We just want you to be the center of everything. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Can we just thank him? Can we give him a hand clap for who he is? What he's doing? Sometimes when I stand up here with my eyes closed, I open them and I'm not saying, facing the same direction as I started. I almost fell off the stage one time. I got so close. But uh, no, we, uh, we're going to punctuate this night with a, with a song, a, a declarative song. And I want to thank every single one of you that spent time praying and those of you that came forward for prayer. And uh, we're going to start having prayer again in services as soon as possible. I know a lot of us, yes. <laughs> And uh, as we rebuild that team, it's such an important aspect of who we are as Christ followers. But I just want to give you a reminder of what it is that we are endeavoring to do in these 21 days. And the focus is not going to change. It's reading, leading right into community nights. And the focus was this growth, that we would continue to grow, grow in our relationship with God. We would grow in maturity, not the growth of this church numerically. If that's what God wants to do, that's awesome. But that we as individuals would grow that we would be encouraged by one another, we'd be encouraged by God, and we would be an encouragement to others, not just here, but wherever we go. Three, that we'd be in unity. Unity, that we would be one as the Father and the Son are one. There'd be a unity that permeates this church, a unity that is in each and every family, a unity that just speaks to the culture, that, hey, I can go here, and there's a people who are unified. They're unique and in unity. I didn't say uniform but unique and in unity. And then tonight is this is the presence of God, that his presence is not just in a worship service or a Sunday, but it's with us wherever we go and whatever we do. And we can be people who usher it in and identify it, or we can be people who just act as if it's not there. But he's always there. He's always there, the presence of God. 
I want to remind you before we, we move on is really want to encourage you, whether you're here, whether you are joining us online, get involved in a, in a small group. Community Nights is launching. All the leaders will be out there. You can sign up. You can sign your kid up uh, for something if you have a child. But get involved because the community nights and the small groups, we expect those four things to happen, that you'll grow, that you'll be encouraged, that you'll be in unity, and you'll experience the presence of God in unique ways. Growth happens in circles not in rows. You want to get in a relationship because you need to be in community because you need people. And I always say this. You say, well, it's hard to take a step of faith and meet new people. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. Uh-huh. What else you got? Right? But it's beneficial for you to do that. And if you're saying, hey, I don't know about showing up at someone's house, uh, that's fine. Uh, community nights is just a great place to start. And so you can get signed up. We want you to have all the, the resources there and the information that you can have. You can go online and you can sign up. You can sign your children up online uh, as well. But I would just encourage you to take that step, maybe even ask the Holy Spirit, what, it is, what is it that you want me to do? How do you want me to, to join? Uh, and what area do you want me uh, to grow in? But I want to I want to thank you guys. You you should be commended for those of you that are willing to get out on a January night and come in here and uh, spend some time with God. Those of you that couldn't make it out, you tuned in, took time out of your day uh, to do that. Thank you so much. We're gonna do these uh, periodically throughout the year. The first one we did, you're all like, "Can we do it again? Can we do it again? Can we do it again?" And uh, yes, we want to keep doing it as we think it's a great opportunity. But here's what I I, I need from you as we have some remaining moments. I need you to stand. I need you to stand. If you're at home, stand up as well. And uh, we're going to sing a declarative song, Glorious Day. We're going to punctuate this night, punctuate that we baptized almost 18 people, yeah, in the new faith. How awesome is that? It's what we do. And uh, we're going to be doing baptism. This is the first baptism we were able to do in almost a year. And uh, so that's so exciting. Baptism is coming back. Prayer is coming back. Jesus is coming back. And uh, we're here to pursue him. So join me as we punctuate this night. Thank you so much for tuning in and being here. I was buried beneath my shame. And who could carry that kind of away? It was my Till I met you, I was breathing but not alive. In all my failures, I tried to hide. It was my our testimony, amen. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Yeah, you called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of
needed rescue My sin was heavy But chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was in awe 